Azeroth is the one above all god, Vishnu, all that. Yep. And I think Argus was something born to be from her. Probably born, um, either created from her, but I do think she, she, I think she probably made Argus. Um, or Argus was separated and severed from her, which is also a, a possibility. There's a possibility that the Titans used domination to make Sargeras cleave Azeroth and Twain, splitting Argus from Azeroth and then subsequently imprisoned both of them inside worlds, separated from one another. But that's harder to prove. Um, so what, Sar what Sargeras has done, I believe, has is that he has taken the power of Argus, infused it into the sword, and then used the sword as um, kind of like an injection. Um, and I think what he intended to do was spread that power of, of Argus throughout her bloodstream instantaneously. And I think that that is why he stabbed the heart. Because I think that if you... First off, I, I think that if he wanted to destroy the world, he could have done that. Um, and he didn't. And that's a big question. People still ask, why didn't he just cleave the world in two? Like they say he did. And that's where the thought stops for people. They don't look at the art and go... That motherfucker's dominated. <laughs> they don't look at the art and realize that the shadowy version of Sargeras wielding a Morn blade with glowing eyes in his shadowy form cleaving this world probably is not actually Sargeras. Like, not probably what he, probably not really him doing what he wants to do, you know? That makes sense. The sepulchral stuff just always made me feel like it was a civilization. I've never got that. I've never got that vibe. I've never got that vibe. The first ones implies at least two, but there's nothing that says it's any more than two. The first ones, it's just an interesting thing. The first ones, hmm. Where did Sargeras get his chains? They're broken. The chains were put on him in the form of, uh, in the form of domination. I'm trying to show you guys. I mean, at this point, they've given us all the hints for what happened to Sargeras, in my opinion. People just choose to ignore it because they don't want to believe it's true. Sargeras wielded a Mornblade and was under the power of domination. It's time to accept it. They cannot make it any more obvious. Look at him. It's time to accept it. They dominated him. Just like all these other characters. But Pyro, those aren't domination runes. Yes, they literally fucking are. But there are also other runes on there that actually appear to be closer to first one's runes, which is fucking interesting to me. But at the end of the day, the runes themselves looked the same, even on the rune carver, even when he didn't have domination power. So speaking through runes is what he was created for. So this image of Sargeras cleaving a planet in half Wow, look at that timing. Cleaving a planet in half, and people are like, why would he not cleave Azeroth in half? I don't know, maybe because by the time he got to Azeroth, he wasn't being dominated anymore? And because he had a sword that was literally housing the essence of the Unmaker inside of it? Who probably is inherently drawn... ...to Azeroth? This being was so much more powerful than the Minion of the Shadow had been. Then Illyria had witnessed flashes of destiny. Now, she lived a history that surpassed the existence of the universe. Argus is also called the Emerald Star in Hearthstone. He's also called the Emerald Star in 1000 Years of War, which is canon. <laughs> so, I mean, again, like, I mean, look at the dialogue. It was energy spinning out into the cosmos. It found warmth near a sun in a world formed around it to protect it as it grew. Generations of life lived and died upon it. It was betrayed. It was bound by something powerful. Generations of life lived and died upon it. On this world that just formed around it. So I wonder who came and put life on the planet. Oh, I'm sure. I'm Pyro. I'm sure it just came out of nowhere. It just came from nowhere. Uh, it was betrayed. It was bound by something powerful. Well, Amenthul says, Time answers to me, Unmaker. The one force that can bind your relentless fury. So, if that's true, guess who bound Argus? Uh, Amenthul. 
So, there is that. Pain, it hurts so much, it's only solace lay within its dream. Another thing that is just heavily fucking ignored. <laughs> that Argus finds solace while it's dreaming. Which is insane. They, because when it's in a world soul form, it's dreaming. They enslaved worlds, they burned worlds. They used its strength to revive their fallen souls. It hurts so much. They found another. It was much more powerful. They wanted to claim it, too. Then they would be unstoppable. It screamed into the cosmos for help. Two children, answered the call. Two children, two bright lights. Two bright lights from Azeroth. A world that was like Argus. From what I understand, the Dreadlords pumped Argus with enough death magic that its soul went to the Shadowlands instead. Okay, can I ask you guys a favor, though? I hate fucking seeing that. Oh, I fucking hate reading that. Let me ask you something. Did anyone stop to think about why? Did anyone, did anyone stop to think on an extra layer for even a half a minute about why they did that? Because this isn't, in my opinion, here's what I think. This isn't as simple as... It's not as simple as... Oh... They needed Argus to be... How do I put this? Oh, Argus was a blank slate, and they just put death into him so that he would go to the Shadowlands. Like... Ugh... What I'm asking is that people need to consider that the reason why they did it is because, okay, so a couple things. First off, they knew it would work, which is, first of all, tells you that they know something beyond what we know. They knew it would work. Second of all, no one stopped to think, are they imbuing Argus with death energy because they need him to go to the Shadowlands or because they're trying to restore what he literally is. Like, how come no one stopped to, like, the guy's files in the, in the game are called Death Titan. He wields a scythe and specializes in soul magic. Like, and people just went, oh, it's because the Legion made him into a Death Titan, Pyro. Bro, are you fucking kidding me? He's literally older than the Legion. How come no one stopped to think and go, Maybe they were turning him back into a death titan or something more aligned with death. Like, oh God. People always assume that power just moves in one direction and that it can't, that things like, uh, how do I put this? That like, oh, it, things are only done just for this one reason and it's very cut and dry, Pyro. They needed him to go to the, uh, the Shadowlands and it's like, okay, but Maybe what you're missing is that maybe Argus was pumped full of so much order that like it ruined his essence and that the Dreadlords were literally trying to use death magic to readjust his alignment so that he would go back to the Shadowlands. Because every, because people just look at it as like, oh, he never was death, had nothing to do with it. Lamau, reorigination, soul blight, soul burst, soul reap. Nah, those things are probably not relevant. <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> They didn't just make him death by it. Like, it's like, and, and it gives people the idea that you can just make a Titan whatever you want. Like, in, in, in a sense, maybe you can. But the idea that like, oh, we'll just take this one thing that's a being of order and arcane and just, uh, or, or that's a being of whatever they think it is. Like, what do they think Argus is? What do, they, what do people think he is? <laughs> like, I, I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I get worked up about it because Argus is literally the, the most disregarded People, oh God, it's just, uh, Argus has given us more con context clues about the history of the universe than literally any other entity in the entire fucking game. And he's just so overlooked. There's so much about Argus that gets overlooked. It just drives me insane. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just get worked up about it. Do you think the storytelling's fault or people just ignoring it? I think people just kind of need to like stop and think a little more. Like, I don't know. I don't know, like, just a little, like, not that people need to stop and think, because the impl implications that people aren't thinking, and that's why they're not, no, that's, that's not what I'm trying to say, like, I put this. Let's just, I'm gonna put it this way. People 
it seems to me, and this just seems to be how the world works nowadays, is that people are more willing to believe what someone tells them rather than what they see with their own eyes. Like, just kind of seems like I would rather just not have to use any of my own opinions or power of deduction to come to a conclusion. I would rather just have someone tell me. And that's okay, I get that. You know, that's okay how sometimes things go, and that's fine. Um, but uh, that's probably why people don't realize things, 